Greg Palmer was the guy who tries to rob him. You hold it right there. Just throw me your wallet. Yes, sir. A little something extra. At the end of that scene, um, John Wayne said to Don Siegel, and this is the first thing they shot, well, John Ford wouldn't have shot it that way. Ooh. And that started it off, and they really got into it all the way through the filming after that. And we have another author with us today whose father was an author. His dad wrote uh, a series of books that have continued to stay published, and several were made into movies. The first one I remember seeing was They Came to Cordura with Gary Cooper, a terrific film with Rita Hayworth and Gary Cooper in a very, very strong performance. A book that he loaned me once to take a look at when I was at uh, the PAX Network, The Homesman. And this has recently been turned into a movie starring and directed by Tommy Lee Jones. But one of the books his dad wrote was The Shootist, and Miles wrote the screenplay for the film and turned it into a wonderful film. He's just part of that team, and he's here with us today, Miles Swarthart. Thanks for the invite, Rob. The Shootist. The story of John Bernard Books, the last of the great gunfighters. A living legend. Everybody went. Young, old, male, female. That was a monster at the time, and the reviews on that film were unanimously high. Everybody seemed to respond to it. Not just the, the performances, but the look, the screenplay, everything. I don't have any funny stories to tell about the making of the shootist because it was a very contentious, troubled film shoot. Was it Don Siegel not getting on with somebody? <laughs> <laughs> they had clashing, the Duke and Mr. Siegel had clashing filmmaking styles. Don Siegel liked to follow the script. John Wayne liked to improvise and change lines and stuff. This was not a bad Jack picture. He didn't have a equity, much equity in the movie. Uh, he didn't get to pick the director. He'd never worked with Siegel before. Um, but he was used to running his own pictures, John Wayne, and he wanted to have a lot of say, particularly over the ending of the film, but casting even some of the smaller supporting roles. They got into fighting over just about everything. The opening scene where he rides into this, they shot it outside of Carson City in Washoe Lake State Park. So you didn't have, you know, uh, electric wires and telephone wires and everything. And he comes down riding his horse. They couldn't bring him down from an elevation. They were at 5,000 feet up at Carson City. And John Wayne was down in one lung from his cancer surgery years before. But they rode him uh, through there and shot the scene with Mr. Palmer. Greg Palmer was the guy who tries to rob him. You hold it right there. Just throw me your wallet. Yes, sir. A little something extra. And the Duke shoots him with a trick shot and then pushes him into this frozen river or a stream that was going by and um, uh, rides off. And what really happened after that, I heard the story, uh, the cast and crew, they pack up, they're finished with the scene, they're going back to the hotel or they're finished for the day, and they forgot Greg. Greg was just left behind in wet clothing or something like that, and they get back to wherever they're going, the hotel or the main uh, shooting area, and they go, where's Waldo? You know? Where's Greg? And I heard later that the Duke compensated him out of his own pocket for that bad mistake, but they were good friends and it was okay and he didn't die of pneumonia, which is, <laughs> but at the end of that scene, um, John Wayne said to Don Siegel, and this is the first thing they shot, well, John Ford wouldn't have shot it that way. Ooh. And that started it off and they really got into it 
all the way through the filming after that. It was tough. Don Siegel was a tough little guy. He didn't get along with Bette Midler in their last film, legendarily. And uh, the only guy star that he really got along with was Clint Eastwood. They made Escape from Alcatraz and a couple of really good films together. Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry, sure. Were you ever uh, on location when they were shooting no, it? Most of no. it seemed like it was studio bound. No, yeah. that's, a, that's kind of a sad story. Uh, Mike Frankovich, the producer, wanted us to come on the set and see the final shootout on the back lot of the Burbank Studios in the saloon. And the problem was that Wayne got a bad flu. This was sh sh in the winter, and he got a flu and an ear infection, and they put him in the hospital in Burbank for, uh, I don't know, a week, 10 days, something like that. And he got better, and he came back to the set and started, tried to shoot again, and he got sick. So they put him back in the hospital again. So they didn't know if he was even going to make it and be able to finish the film. And so they couldn't give us more than 24 hours notice. Um, that We'd had to jump on a plane and fly over and see this last scene. We didn't do it, and I've kicked myself once a week ever since, you know, to got coming in and meeting the Duke. Okay, good. I deserve it. But um, Ron Howard said later that was a very tense set for the final gunfight in the saloon. Um, they had shot, Siegel shot around him, body doubles, everything they could do, to, f and they, there was nothing left to film. And so... Um, the insurance kicked in, and they kept the cast and crew on, on uh, the paycheck, on the payroll, while this was going on. Even back in 1976, when they filmed The Shootist, uh, the stars had to have insurance. I mean, had to have uh, physical exams for their insurance to get passed. And the Duke wasn't in very good shape for this film. Supposedly, they paid a doctor off under the table to get him passed. And luckily they did, and his insurance kicked in for this thing to uh, uh, pay a lot more money to keep the, the film going. Um, but he came back, and dem Wayne demanded to see the footage that they'd shot in the gunfight with the body double and everything else, and said, no, 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 this is no good. you got to film it with me. So they started again for the final shooting, and Ron Howard said it was very, very tense. Uh, John Wayne was really irritated with Siegel and the crew that they thought he was going to die and not finish a picture, and that was inconceivable to John Wayne that he wouldn't finish making a movie. You have a cancer. Advanced. How much time do I have? Two months, six weeks. There's no way to tell. In his defense, he was playing a character dying of cancer, prostate cancer, in the shootist, and in real life, uh, Patrick Wayne's not here to ask him this question, but we think that he knew that his cancer had come back, was no longer in remission when he played this final character. So he was playing a legendary gunfighter, uh, sarcastic, kind of full of himself, a living legend, and that ex was exactly the way John Wayne was in real life. So this final role fit him like a glove, really, and it gave one of his best performances. It was quite subdued, dressed in a dark morning coat suit, like he's going to a funeral, and has his final shootout. And as Arthur Knight said, you said, it was the finest valedictory um, performance of any major American actor. that, he, Except maybe for Henry Fonda and Golden Pond, who won an Oscar for that role, too. Those two would be it. But um, The Shootist has become kind of a classic. Uh, it's a very famous title. I have just finished writing a sequel novel called The Last Shootist. It takes up immediately where The Shootist ends. The John Wayne character, The Shootist, is dead in The Shootist. But the Ron Howard character in the movie, Gillum Rogers, 18 years old, he inherits the guns, and he's a wannabe gunfighter. How could you get into so many fights and you always come out on top? I found out early that most men, regardless of cause or need, blink an eye or draw a breath before they pull a trigger. 
I won't. The kid in the novel is a much tougher character than Opie was able to... Ron Howard's a fine actor, and John Wayne said he was one of the best young actors he ever worked with, but he had a different interpretation on the character in the movie. Let's talk about the Holmesman a little, and we're diverting. It's got a terrific cast. Uh, Hilary Swank with Tommy Lee Jones in it. They've got James Spader, uh, John Lithgow. Barry Corbin. Barry Corbin, your friend Barry, and my friend Barry's in it. Catch this one. It's a real unusual story. And uh, Meryl Streep and Hilary Swank are in their first Western. Well, there's more and more Westerns coming along. I want to thank all of our guests for being here. Thank all of you for being here.